What's up everybody, this is DJ Scandalous, also known as Tupac Remix. I just wanted to do this video today on the album Until the End of Time by Tupac. It was released 17 years ago in 2001 on March 27th. And I just wanted to um, really do a brief review from a fan perspective that knows the material, the originals, and all that on, on the album, rather than just a media critic or a music critic that just focuses on the complete song. I wanted to really do this video on based on the originals compared to the remixes and what a fan like me that knows all the material feels about the album and the impact it had on music or Tupac's legacy. Um, before I get into it, I'm just gonna read a little bit about the album on the Wikipedia page. It says, Until the End of Time is the seventh studio Tupac album, the third one released after his passing, after um, Machiavelli already sealed down and still on rise. Uh, it was certified 4X Platinum. The album consists of material recorded while the rapper was on Death Row Records towards the latter end of 1996, which is, that's kind of a fabrication because a lot of the songs were scattered from 95 to 96. So you had songs from like, you know, All Eyes On Me sessions mixed in with like songs from the Machiavellian One Nation sessions, which would have never went together if Tupac released it himself. So moving on, the majority of the music compositions were remixed from the original state. Now, a lot of portions of the overall album was remixed, but there's some that are original or they just took the original and updated the beats a little bit and changed stuff around, which I'll get into that as I go through the list when the Wikipedia page comes up. It also says that until then, the time was highly anticipated and ended up being one of the best selling hip hop albums in 2001, which I think it was the highest selling one. And that I think mostly that was because the hype that you know he's dead and he's releasing more stuff, but also because until then, the time and letter to my unborn remixes were actually pretty dope, they didn't they were pretty good, and you know, the letter to my unborn. And Until a Dime had famous samples, one from Michael Jackson and one from Mr. Mr. The Broken Wings song, which were famous songs in the 80s. Um, and Librarian Girl, when Michael Jackson released that, and it was also a sample for um, A Letter to My Own Born, which actually Tupac originally sampled for Thug and Me, which we'll get into that also later. Um, also, let's see, there, there um, Wikipedia also talks about you know all the times that the album was censored so I'll get into that later now I'm just gonna bring up the Wikipedia page so you can check it out as you see it's a double disc album um, most of its remixes you do have some a lot of remixes here by Johnny J that actually worked with Tupac you do have some by Ant Banks and Above the Law that Tupac was familiar with um, Mike Mosley did a remix well not a remix but it was an enhanced version QD3 is also credited here and he did remixes, not very good ones, but you know, he worked with Tupac on Machiavelli album. So as we look over the track list, you know, Bother the Dead Soldier, if you compare the original, it's mostly the same. They just took out the main horns or the sample and that, that was really a, a cost cutting measure by them. And what they did is, you know, the main reason why they remixed most of the, all these tracks is because they were cutting cost and, you know, for them to release the originals with, um, Famous Mars Day in a Time samples or famous samples, um, you know, all across the board. You know, friends having that Houdini friends sample, you know, it would cost them a lot of money to pay to get that cleared. So, you know, I think mostly the whole reason why they remixed these tracks is because they wanted to penny pinch and they wanted to mine their own pockets. You know, Interscope and, you know, the people working at his estate just wanted to put money in their own pockets that they wanted to make a living and so they didn't really care about the way the songs came out and they didn't really care about respecting the craft and respecting Tupac's own body of work. So Father Death Soldier I would say that was the perfect touch up. You know that followed the um, the framework that they did on Are You Still Down Still I Rise or Are You Still Down Still I Rise each had remixes on those albums but the larger um, portion of those albums were original versions 
you know, almost the same way that Tupac recorded his songs, except for some minor adjustments and enhancements. So Ballad of Death Soldier, the, it, it samples the same. Uh, the chorus is the original chorus, which is very rare for a remix that they release that they use the original chorus. Um, and that was by Cold187 um, from um, Above the Law, also known as Big Hutch. The original was by Johnny J. Johnny J actually remixed that track, but they didn't use it. Fuck Friends here is also known as Let's Be Friends. And that's actually a Machiavelli era track, which was for 7 Day Theory album. That was cut. Um, I'm not sure if it, they didn't release it because of sample clearance or because, you know, the main rumor is that um, Tupac recorded a six minute this song, The Nas, on the Friends, the original Friends beat and QD3 or um, Tommy Lee, which was a sound engineer, he told Tupac it, it just sounds stupid. So Tupac re-recorded it as, you know, uh, uh, a sex-oriented song, you know, made for the bitches. And, you know, it eventually got moved back on the Machiavelli album, then it got moved off, so I'm not sure if it got moved off for songs like Just Like Daddy or not. But this is a remix of it. And the whole beach change, it doesn't have the, that sample, it has a chorus by a female singer, which, you know, the original was probably an instant classic. You know, you could release the original, probably would have been one of the best tracks on this album. And the weird thing is that Tupac actually has a hook that he sings on the original version that they didn't even use. And that's one of the things if you listen to originals and you listen to remixes, Usually the originals will have way more Tupac vocals than the remix. Now, I'm not sure if that's a form of censoring or if they just said, oh, we, we just gotta make this mainstream or we just gotta fit this singer on this track. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna re, re, uh, delete Tupac's vocals, which I think is completely wasteful. If you have a bunch of Tupac vocals, why are you cutting stuff out and not using it? You know, he may have 300 unreleased songs, but that's all he has. He's not like an artist that's still alive that can keep recording and recording and recording for 40 years or 30 years, whatever. So, you know, I think that's wasteful. And plus, you know, he took the time to record that layer or record the hook. So why wouldn't you honor what he recorded? Um, moving on, Little Homies, I think it's one of the best remixes on his album. Um, the, the only really issue I have, you know, I, I like the original version of this. It's a lot grittier by Johnny J. Um, the remix is more up tempo, fast pace, doesn't have Danny Boy on it. But the original outro, Tupac, you know, this is LL Cool J. He says, um, fuck your kids and fuck your wife. Um, you know, that, that's another song where they completely removed like probably a minute's worth of Tupac vocals which I can understand because he kind of went crazy on the outro. But still, you still had that there and why not use it? So I think that's another track that they kind of messed up on. But overall, it's pretty much perfect. You can find actually that remix, uh, the original Johnny J remix of it with the full outro on YouTube. Moving on, there's Let Em Have It SK featuring SKG. This remix was by LT Hutton, which I think this is one of the worst remixes on the album. LT Hunt has no business producing for Tupac. Now, LT Hunt probably, um, the rumor is that he did the Watch Your Mouth remake, uh, original version for Machiavelli, and that's the only song he did. You know, there's no really confirmation if he even produced that track or not. It's still unreleased to this day. Um, so, that may be the reason why he got involved with this album. And as you know, LT Hunt was responsible for those terrible remixes on, on Pox Life and also that terrible All Eyes On Me movie, which had a lot of fabrications. You know, they sued his mother, and you know, they didn't really use any of the $50 million budget or $40 million budget to really put out any tracks. So, you know, it just seemed like he's a, also a money grubber too. That This remix was just completely terrible. The whole thing was distorted. You know, SKG is, I guess, you know, the verse was good. You know, um, but you could have got someone better. You could have got you could have got Eve. You could have used the least loops. You know, less diverse on there. You could have got um, MC Light. Somebody. 
You know, it didn't even need a female verse. You, you know, you could just, the original, you could just removed, you know, Storm if Storm didn't want to be a part of the project and just double up the rock your body, you know, chorus. And it could have been just like toss it up where you have a verse on a long singing section and you have another verse. So there was really no need to get another female rapper on there unless you're using a left eye. Good Life is a quality, you know, update that's mostly original, but they did just, you know, mix and master and make it sound better. The only really issue I have with this version is Edie's all over the tracks. He changed his verse and then he also, you know, he takes over the whole hook, which as you know, with like Still I Rise, you know, the Outlaws were known for, Outlaws were known for redoing their verses and talking over Tupac and, you know, um, doing Tupac's and doing a new hook in Tupac's place and also talking over Tupac's hook, which not a lot of fans are happy or or satisfied with. Um, Good Life, other than that, was pretty dope. You know, that's one of my favorites on here because it's mostly original. But the, you know, the issue, the problem is, you know, when you hear it from like a DJ or produce, producing um, perspective, the problem is when Tupac drops his verse, you know, when he does the opening part of the verse, it's still playing the intro part of the beat. So, you know, the problem is they should have doubled up the intro part of the beat and moved the vocals over to the right side, and then you have the beat drop right when he starts his verse. Now, the reason they didn't do this is because Big Psych has a longer verse than 16 bars. So when Big Psych starts his verse, it's still on the chorus section as well. So what they should have done is completely make, spread out the beat a little bit more so they could drop you know the verses in the right part of the beat because there's always a chorus in instrumentation with, with most songs that comes on during the chorus section or the hook section or the intro section or the outro section you know and they kind of let the intro part go over Tupac's beginning, beginning verse they kind of um, did the same thing for Big Psych when he's kind of singing there because he had a longer verse than usual which they could have easily just adjusted because back then they were still using Pro Tools now like doing on the computer like I like I do for my remixes. So that's the only problem I have with that track. Um, Happy Home, that's a pretty good remix. I like the original. Um, the original has you know a male female singer produced by Johnny J. Was recorded for All Eyes on Me sessions. Um, I guess I would have used the original. But you know, they could have replaced the singers and put like someone famous on there, like Mary J. Blige, and have her redo the original lyrics for the track. Um, you didn't really have to reproduce this and have an unknown singer. They, you know, no one knows who the female singer is, and that's true with many of these songs, like "Letter to My Unborn." You don't know who the um, singer really is. Uh, let them have it. You don't really know who the singer is in the background, fuck friends, you know, you have this high profile album, why aren't you having Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, um, you know, um, you know, and there's a lot of other singers you got, R. Kelly on some tracks if you wanted to, you could have had some singers that also worked with Murder Inc. and um, DMX, like Charlie Baltimore and, Christ and Christina Milian and stuff like that, it would have been far better than some of these singers that no one knows or the original cast like Val Young and Nancy Fletcher that worked on tracks on All Eyes on Me and Machiavelli. So that's one of the problems I have with that. Actually I skipped Letter to My Unborn which you know I think that's a great remix but the main problem is they took that sample from another Tupac song called Thug and Me and Thug and Me with the Liberian Girl sample is probably one of his best tracks or one of my favorite tracks of all time and they completely destroyed it, putting it with a crap beat and then moving that sample over for a letter in my own board. But, you know, there's a quality remix, but one of the main issues again is you have a singer that's on there that no one really knows about, and he cut off about a minute of his vocals. You know, he, he on the original version, he keeps going, talking to his unborn child, and that's one of the biggest travesties you could do is, you know, when you're censoring and removing vocals, why would you remove something that's so important that he felt the need to record it for his kid in case he passed you know so i didn't really understand that a lot of fans don't like that they removed his vocals 
Um, I'm not a big fan of that either. Um, I would have used the remix and I would have had the original version on the album as well. Now moving on, you have, oh, oh also, the original actually has the same sample as um, Wonder Pit, Heaven Gotta Get a Remix on Are You Still Down? So maybe that's probably why they remixed the track and then use that sample because um, in 97 when they were remixing the artist to deny songs, they were actually in a lawsuit with Suge Knight that gained the Death Row tracks. So they didn't even have the Death Row um, tracks yet. So they probably didn't even know that Tupac even made that that song with the same sample. Or, or they would have probably used a different sample or not even used that remix. So moving on, you have Breathing, which is another remix by Johnny J. It's probably one of his better ones, but you know, the only really issue I have with this is you have more outlaws taking over the tracks, you know. Um, Kadafi had an original verse on here, Silky Fine, and you didn't really use them. Now I can understand that you didn't use Kadafi because he has the same verse that he used on the other song, Time After Time, with Tupac, which is still unreleased. But you didn't even release that track anyway, so why not release Kadafi on this, on this version, even if you're remixing? Now, you can also find Breathing with Busy Bone, which is a quality remix. You know, if I was doing it, I would have had that version. Um, obviously, Mix and Master better and with Kadafi. And also, Tupac has like a half verse that they, for breathing that they didn't even use. So it's just wasteful again. Moving on, you have All Out, which is one of the, actually, that is probably the last track that Tupac recorded while alive in September 6, 1996, which he went to the studio to record for the Mike Tyson, you know, entrance, you know, the Let's Get It On song, which is still unreleased today, but you can find it on YouTube as well, also called Let's Get Ready to Rumble. He recorded three tracks that day which was All Out, also known as Die Slow, Hell for a Hustler, and Let's Get It On. Now, this track was also remixed, and they only used his big long verse. On the original, Tupac has an intro, he has the verse, and then it goes to Qaddafi, and then it goes to the rest of the Outlaws, and then he has like an outro hook where he tells them to die slow, um, and then he has like multiple, maybe two or three layers of outro vocals where he's talking over himself. And they only only use the verse, which again is kind of wasteful because even if you were going to remix, you could use the intro, you could use the verse, you could use the outro hook as a main hook for the song instead of having Edie and all over the song. And then you had out all new verses, which was kind of stupid as well. So that's kind of just a wasteful slot there for the song. Fucking with the wrong niggas mostly. Original Just With Some Echoes, perfect. Thug Me with um, Casey and JoJo. This is actually Johnny J's version, which um, better than the other version. I think it's more up-tempo, more club-friendly. But again, I would have released the original. It's one of the better tracks. This song was also missing a lot of portion of the outro vocals by Tupac where he was talking. Everything they know. This was a quality remix by Johnny J, but the chorus vocals were kind of shitty by an unknown singer again, which you didn't really need. You could have thrown in some samples in there. You know, the original was from the All Eyes on Me sessions. Um, and it just had two verses and an opening slot from, because I guess they didn't have a singer there or maybe he didn't want a singer. So. You can say that's, that, that was a lot incomplete, but I don't think it was. I think he just moved on to another track and they were going to add to it later and they maybe never did, but or maybe they just scrapped it for another song. Well, Johnny J put a new singer on there and I think it sounds good, but one of the main things is when a producer probably produced for these albums, they produced for it and then they sent you know, the estate, the vocals, and the instrumentation. Then they had their sound engineers change stuff around, remove vocals, and when that, what ended up happening is when they were mixing and mastering the songs, they mixed the song totally off beat. So Tupac's vocals don't even match the beat. Tupac's vocals don't hit the right snares at the right time. And the song just sounds like any old, like 15 year old wannabe Tupac DJ on YouTube trying to remix this track and just plop it all over a new beat and just sounds awful. Until the end of time remix. Um, perfect, 
I would have used the original on here as well with remix, but you know, one of them was just fine because both of these remixes here had the same beat. MOB, um, there's a couple problems with this track. I would have used the original as well. One of the main issues here is they made the ad lib layers too high. That's the only really thing. So you have where Tupac's, you know, rapping and where he goes back and he goes and doubles his parts of his vocals to make them stand out more. So instead of like saying, um, I'm just going to use the expression from like, um, Doug's Mansion. Um, Dear Mama, your baby boy's doing good. Tell the homies I'm in heaven and they ain't got hoods. Tupac would, you know, rap that whole verse and then he'll go back over and, you know, be like, tell the homies they ain't got hoods. And then he will emphasize on that and only say that part, you know. And they made the backing layer, which is that little layer, which you will put underneath the vocals way too high and it just throws this song off because then you have those vocals too high on Tupac's part and no one else's part. Okay, moving on, Worldwide Mod Figures. This is one of the most hated, probably, remixes <laughs> on this album by most fans because, you know, you had, you had a classic, I think it was Mars Day in Time, the Can I song. Um, and what they did is they made it more mainstream hip-hop-ish, but they made Noble all over the track talk about his nuts hanging. And, you know, a lot of fans didn't really appreciate that or like that. Moving on, you had the Big Psych interlude, which I think is a big waste of spot. It has no Tupac vocals. The beat's great, but you have no vocals on here by Tupac, which there's so many songs still on, left unreleased, so many layers, and you know, you could put Tupac's vocals on there, you know, of him talking or doing a hook. You know, Closest Road Dogs has a completely alternate version of Tupac doing his verses and the ad libs and talking in between the verses. You also have One Doctor to Cry, which has another version with Tupac, a two minute long outro and different intro. They could throw that on there. One Doctor to Cry also has the unreleased interlude where he talks for like three minutes. You could throw that on there. And they just made, you know, Big Psych like talk over the beat for nothing for an intro and just it made sense when you have all those Tupac songs in the vault, all these unreleased layers in the vault, collecting dust, doing nothing. Closest Road Dogs, great remix. The chorus vocals, terrible again, um, unknown singer, and he also had Tupac censored when he's saying, uh, you know, set to, set, set to explode on death row. They edited it, uh, you know, the death row part out because they were having problems with death row at that time, which is stupid, you know, so you just have, you know, these verses where he's rapping all of a sudden there's a gap in between the verse, which, you know, it, that happens with Eminem as well. But at least Eminem has, you know, the chance to go back over and fill those in and Tupac didn't have the chance. So it just sounds retarded, you know, or stupid that, you know, he will have gaps in his verses. It's just, a, you know, a form of censorship, really. Um, moving on, Nigga's Nature. I think this is a, a good remix. Um, I would use the original as well with um, Val Young or Jay Valentine. There's not really much else I can say on that. Um, not a lot of fans like the remix, but I think it's pretty, you know, good. And actually, you know, that that same sample was used by, you know, Ja Rule and was it uh, Ja Rule's producer? I can't think of his name right now, but he sampled it for the "What's Love," you know, song with Fat Joe and Ja Rule. So that's how that song came about because they copied the Tupac remix of that. One Thugs Cry is a remix as well. Um, this is missing the Tupac hook where he raps the whole hook. It's also missing a two minute long Tupac outro. It's missing an alternate Tupac intro, which like I said, also has an interlude, which I said you could have had some of this after, you know, moves after some of the vocals on this track. You know, I would prefer it with the hook instead of, you know, chorus by an unknown singer. So again, that's you know, another mistake they, that they made. You don't have to worry. Um, I'm a fan of the original, but I can see why they remixed it. But the problem is, you know, um, halfway through the track, you have Tupac and then you have, uh, I think it's Noble? And it might be Noble or Qaddafi after, you know, Tupac's verse. No, no, it's Noble. You have a new Noble verse, and then you you know you have Castro and that and you have new verses by them recorded in 2001 and then all of a sudden 
you have Castro and Noble 96 verses come on halfway through the track and you can tell their vocal their the deepness and the tone in their voice is completely totally different because there's a time lapse there of five years you just had new vocals on on the track where they're older like 25 26 27 years old and then you remix some of their old vocals from 96 onto the track where they're like 19 18 years old and you just it just throws the whole song off and then then it makes cut off the offbeat which sounds terrible this ain't living this is a quality remix and I actually like the chorus um, but the problem is you censored him again where he says he's gonna reappear disappear as a dog father you know um, Snoop Dogg a ride with me um, which I guess they censored it because you know Death Row was having problems with Snoop Dogg back then with Snoop Dogg on No Limit and other labels around that time and you know them fighting over unreleased songs as well so I think that's probably why. Why You Turn On Me? Um, the original actually has a chorus by Tupac and he also censored out when he says about you know checking Wendy Williams into the fat farm. Um, also the Death Row shout outs. Um, you know really removed from that song as well. Last one's left is pretty much the same. The only thing is you know the beat is actually kind of enhanced um, and you have the shout outs in the original that was about the dog pound and OFTB and above the law actually I think no, no it probably wasn't above the law but OFTB and um, Thug Life actually do get shout outs on the outro and this one actually has it edited. Thug to me I'm not sure if this is the Johnny J one or if that one up there is the one with LT Hunt just terrible, so we're not even going to even mention that. This shouldn't even be on the album. Where's My Firstborn? This shouldn't have made the album because the original is a classic. The original had Nutso on it, and you can find one with the things that are chained in chorus. Let them have it. At least Lopes. This is a quality remix. You know, I would have probably used it. I know I like Lisa Lopes first, but she would have been better suited on the original. Running on E, that's pretty much the original, and that's the way I would use it. Perfect. When I get free, this is mostly the original. It's just some uh, the beats a little bit modified. You have Jay Valentine on it. Perfect. Until then, time with Richard Page, almost the same as the one before, but R Richard Page is obviously from the Mr. Mr. Group. I actually prefer that version more than the version that they use, but obviously they wouldn't have had Richard Page do the video because. Apparently what happened, RL was recording a song and they end up videotaping him recording the song and it wasn't even meant for a music video and they, and they end up liking what they saw and they end up just making a video out of that. So that's how that video came out. So if you wouldn't you know, had the RL version on the album, there probably wouldn't have been the same music video released for that um, song. Okay, so now going back, this whole thing was marketed as a Machiavelli era album which you know Machiavelli started probably around July 96 till September so you had roughly since October 95 when Tubac had you know All Eyes On Me sessions he had Outlaw Immortal album sessions you had 100% Black Gold album sessions with songs like Hit Em Up, um, Worst My First Born, Trouble Song, When Thugs Cry, Never Had a Friend Like Me. The problem with this album is they market it as Machiavelli album but it's not as songs from all these different albums or eras Frankenstein together so they completely lied about that and also you have a lot of these tracks that um, are edited censored which shouldn't have been done a lot of tracks are mi missing the you know vocals by Tupac which shouldn't have been done also a lot of these songs don't even go together you know, Tupac had a blueprint, like 45 album ideas for mostly every song. So you would have a song like Butler Death Soldier, which probably was meant for his Me Against the World album. Then you had, you know, his Machiavelli, you know, era songs on here as well. And his One Nation songs, which would have never would have merged together on the same album. So that's one of the main problems here. But overall, I would say this is probably the my third favorite album that they released after his casting, I will still take Still I Rise 
and also are, are still down over this um, this album because their those albums were more in um, original form than this album. This album was like the beginning and the end, completely remixing and penny pinching, and you know trying to get any mainstream singer on these songs. You know a lot of these songs still aren't released in original form. Still have all his own release vocals just sitting in the vault somewhere collecting dust doing nothing um also and with the album cover the front is a pretty dope album you know artwork but the main problem with that is you know this is a death row album he doesn't have his tattoos or nothing on his arms and when you go look in the sleeve you know he has no tattoos at all on his arms so they use pre-death row pictures which does make sense if you're doing death row era album but I guess they figured like you know fans want to pick up on it or they're too stupid or you know they just really didn't care other than that I would say um it was a pretty good album I still listen to many of these tracks I wish a lot of them would have been released in original form or original hands form like Ballard of Death Soldier but this is far better than Pox Life and Loyal of the Game, where they completely changed everything and put on whatever trendy artist that they have. At least there's a lot of tracks here with, you know, Big Psych and E and the Outlaws and solo tracks rather than, you know, um, A3 and J Rock and all these people that, you know, Tupac, Young Buck, that Tupac would probably not have worked with, you know, if he was still alive. Um, so that's my review on the album. It could have been a lot better. I think they should have stayed with Tupac's blueprints of his albums. You know, he, he had album plans for One Nation, he had album, album plans for A Me Against the World Part 2, he had albums for Thug Life Volume 2 from um, the Death Row period, which would have songs like Still Ballin' on it, um, Letter to the President, um, and other songs like that, um, Teardrops Close Caskets, Head Em Up would have been on there, the demo version, Fade Me, Grab the Mic, all on the same album. So they had all these ideas, all these blueprints, and they just, you know, said hell with it. We're just going to make whatever Frankenstein-like versions we can make. And I think that's where they scared wrong. They should have just kept it true and honored his body of work and his legacy by putting the songs out, at least in a way that he would have approved of, the way he put it down. You know, you could remix some of these tracks or enhance them, but you should have gave the majority the way that he, he meant people to hear it. So that's my review. Comment below. Tell me what I missed. Um, let me know your thoughts on anything I said. And if you want me to review any other albums, you know, talk about various changes. Now, I probably missed a lot of stuff in here, so if you comment below, I'll get to that. Um, just let me know if you want me to do any other albums, what, like Better Days or Pox Life or talk about what Lord of the Game. Yeah, I, I can definitely you know, talk for hours on Lord of the Game. So just let me know if you want me to talk about that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Take care.